Hello everybody, my name is Charlie Allington. I'm the director of feed sales here at Heritage Cooperative. And I'm here with, I'm Tommy Wise. I'm a beef nutrition specialist from the Southeast area with Heritage Cooperative. Tommy and I are here today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about some of our mineral products and our mineral promotion. Um, you know, typically we'd be doing some in-person meetings with all of you producers out there. Uh, have a good evening of learning and conversation about some product, some management type situations. Unfortunately, with our current uh, state, we're unable to do that. So we thought we'd bring you some informational videos. Um, some of this maybe you've heard before, some of it not. So hopefully we learn a little bit extra today and we're able to help out on your operation. So today we're gonna talk about uh, minerals and in particular types of minerals uh, and some of the options that are out there so that when you're talking with a sales specialist like Tommy, uh, he can help guide you to what's right for your operation. So, so Tommy, what's the first thing you think about when you think about mineral supplementation and uh, the producers you work with? The first thing I'm gonna emphasize to my producers is to use a mineral. Uh, there's been lots of data shown that cattle do perform better on a mineral uh, with some sort of mineral program. Um, there is lots of data showing lots of research done that shows the extra benefit you get from feeding a cow mineral. Uh, you get anything from growth on calves, weaning weights could be higher. Uh, you also could get some first time breed backs quicker. Uh, you can also even get a little better body condition score gained from feeding a mineral and using a mineral program. Yeah, I mean, that's right. If you really think about it, um, the research that you're talking about shows one of the biggest things that a complete mineral program can do for you is increase the utilization of the forages which you're already feeding. Uh, and that's university data. That, that doesn't matter which program it is. That's just university data um, that's out there. And I, I think people, you know, when we talk about mineral, we, we don't always think about the fact of the complete versus non-complete. Um, and I mean, I still run into a few non-complete minerals out there. I mean, um, what, do you, what do you see? And what are your thoughts on, on complete and non-complete minerals? Yeah, and I mean, I think the first thing you need to worry about is pick a mineral that works good for your program. Uh, you know, some guys like to use a loose mineral. Some guys like to feed a tub. Um, you know, it's whatever works good for your operation. Um, it's whatever you can get uh, that, that you feel like is most easily utilized by you something you're gonna keep in front of the cows and, and make it easier for you. Uh, on a complete or non-complete mineral, that complete mineral is one that includes the salt with it. Uh, non-complete mineral is one that you would add salt or feed free choice salt with. Uh, that's a, a difference of opinions, you know, and I feel like as long as you use a mineral that works good for your program, uh, you can kind of select that from several different options and types of mineral we, we sell. I would agree. Uh, I know personally, preference-wise, I, I lean and push a lot towards a complete mineral. Um, just from a standpoint, as I think of it uh, as kind of uh, your feed lots and, and your people that are feeding that total mixed ration where the cow's getting the same, the, the same nutrition in every single bite versus having her go to one side of the mineral feeder for salt and one side of the mineral feeder for the actual mineral. I, I, I mean, I, I lean that way and I would say probably, oh, the majority of the mineral we sell is going to be some sort of complete program that has salt in it. So, so when you get into those pro those programs, Tommy, I, I mean, I know a lot of people will like to mix salt even uh, or talk about mixing salt with a complete mineral um, because intakes get too high or, or they seem like the cows are eating too much mineral. What's your take on that and, and, and what do you think and how would you recommend these guys handle a situation like that? So on the mixing salt with your mineral, that is going to discourage your consumption. Uh, these minerals are set up to be a four ounce per day per head consumption rate. Uh, so if you're mixing salt, what you're doing is you're decreasing their consumption, which is decreasing their, their utilization of that mineral. So, you know, you wouldn't want to really, mixing that salt is going to change your consumption rate. Uh, probably if you have a consumption problem and your cattle are eating way above what the, the recommended four ounces, we probably need to take a look at maybe something else that's happening, do a forage sample, or something else, uh, you know, some environmental change that may be affecting their consumption and making them consume it more. Uh, you know, that's something you come to your local nutrition specialist and we can, you know, go over those 
those advantages and disadvantages with you and, and go over some of those topics, you know, we may have a different problem other than mineral. So yeah, there's definitely other things that uh, could be hindering mineral intake or making mineral intake or making cows over consume that mineral. Um, and you know, working in Eastern Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, most of my career, the biggest thing that I've noticed is phosphorus levels, especially on strip mine ground or guys that run cattle on strip mine ground. Uh, those phosphorus levels in the forages are low. Um, and so we end up requiring a higher phosphorus because there's really two main things that these cattle are gonna eat to their need of. Uh, and it's how we can control consumption and salt phosphorus are the yes. two major ones. Right. So um, we gotta make sure we're getting some of those things right. And it's not always just about cutting it with salt um, to lower their intakes. And let's face it, like you were saying, you're, you're lowering their intake of the mineral. They're eating the same amount of salt. Well, you've cut it. You basically, the tag that we're providing you, what the phosphorus level we're providing you is actually now going down as well, as well as all the vitamins, minerals, and micronutrients. Right. So, so they're getting less of what they need. Getting less of what they need. So we got to be careful with that. So if overconsumption is an issue, I get with your sales specialist, get with your nutritional person and, and uh, try to make sure that you get the right mineral for your situation and those situations change. So Tommy, you know, we've also sat there and we've talked, a, we've talked a lot about loose minerals and some different things within the loose mineral, but you know, we also offer a, a lot of these options, m most all of these options in a tub form as well, uh, depending on the situation at the farm. So. Right, you know, I mean, these, these complete minerals, are offered in a tub form as well as the non-complete minerals. Um, we can get those with also the available for the breeder type mineral. Um, you know, those are offered in a tub form as well. They're also offered in the loose mineral. So it's whatever works the best for that operation and for, for that customer. Um, you know, lots of guys like the tubs. They're easier to deal with. You'd put them out in one spot. You can move them pretty easy. Um, it, it takes you away from moving a, a mineral feeder all the time. Uh, I've got lots of customers that also like that mineral feeder because you can pick it up and move it. Um, you know, don't have to mess with tubs. Don't end up with that really nice water tank at the end when you get done with a loose mineral feeder. That's true. That's true. I know I've used those for plenty of single calf pens or something when I got to pull something in. It makes a great water at the end of the day. Right. But, you know, you talk about tubs and, yeah, we have a lot of the, the, the same options available, complete versus non-complete. A lot of the tubs are non-complete. They will recommend... Uh, free choice salt to be offered with them. There are a few that are complete, but most of the tubs we actually uh, end up selling are non-complete. My tip and trick for that is I just take a, a salt block, uh, one of the square salt blocks, and I just set it on top of the tub. Yep. I don't even have to worry about putting loose salt out in a, in a regular mineral feeder. It's one thing, and, and that's how I do mine. Right. Um, and I think that's been, a, it's been really beneficial to me. It makes it a little bit easier because I don't typically have mineral feeders uh, right. sitting out and around. So, you know, one thing we, we talked about on the loose mineral and we talked about the tubs now, uh, there's a couple different types of loose mineral as well. Uh, we can talk about a weatherized mineral or, mineral or a non-weatherized mineral. Um, you know, this wind and rain is a, is a weatherized mineral. Uh, it's got the storm technology. You know, it's a mineral that won't cake up, won't get caked up in your feeder. Uh, the meal type mineral, there's a lot of customers that really like that meal mineral. Um, especially in my southeastern Ohio area, there's a lot of guys that use that meal mineral. It's something that, that they've had really good luck with and they like to stick with. So yeah, Tommy, and when you really think about weatherization, I'm gonna go back to tubs now. That's really the ultimate weatherized mineral right there. I mean, that is a mineral and molasses hard cooked, you know, they, it goes through a cooking process tub that makes the cows really lick on it and, and to get their consumption and keep it where it's supposed to be. And not only are they getting the mineral in it, but that thing is hard and it can rain five, six inches and you might get the top to get a little soft. But when you get down in there, that thing is going to be hard and it's still weatherized. So, I mean, that's one of the other reasons I really like the tub. So, right. And one thing on that tub is it does take a little different consumption rate. Yep. Uh, these loose minerals are a four ounce consumption rate. That tub is a half a pound to a pound of consumption rate. So they're using it a little more per day, but those tubs are a little bigger option. Uh, you know, you don't have to maybe go to the, the mill as often to get those tubs. Yeah. Yeah. And those tubs, I mean, they're um, the, the red mineral tub, the real, the hard cooked mineral tub that are for mineral. Yeah. We'll see that half pound recommended uh, fed rate, you know, 
we'll talk about other types of tubs like protein tubs and high fat tubs, but those are really supplementations. Those aren't really right. a mineral program uh, and should be used with free choice mineral of some sort, whether it be tubs or loose. Right. And I think when, we, when that's important to talk about, and we actually will have another segment, it's not for today's discussion, but we will have another segment on supplementation and we'll talk about those tubs, protein tubs and high fat tubs and some of that in, in that. Yeah, and while we were talking about the different kinds of tubs, you know, there's different kinds of mineral out there to use. Um, you know, we offer several different styles of mineral. Uh, we offer a high mag mineral for uh, these guys that are, you know, coming off of real green grass and that grass tetany, uh, you know, to help prevent that. Um, they also have, you know, a, a breeder mineral, something like a chelated mineral, um, you know, something like a pro cycle even that, that Purina has just come out with, uh, a mineral that's got some extra enzymes in it. Um, it's got Purifirm mixed in with it as well. You know, should help with that fiber digestibility type aspect. Um, you know, they also make a, a stress type tub, you know, on those tubs, you know, for incoming calves. So several different options there on, on what meets your needs and what type of year and what type of season of the year that you're in. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly right. And, you know, we talk about those breeders and the Avail of Four that's offered in both tub and loose mineral. But, you know, I get a lot of either seed stock or club calf type producers who, you know, they're putting in inexpensive embryos or, or they're really needing to breed by a certain date uh, for showing and different things like that. And so with those guys, you know, what would be your biggest recommendation for them? And, and where would you typically go with an operation like that? You know, on something like that, you know, that's kind of my background is in the seed stock end of the industry. Um, you know, those guys are trying to get first time conception, trying to get cows AI'd back, uh, you know, might be setting up a group of recips to put in embryos. You know, I would probably recommend something like that ProCycle Mineral. Um, it's geared more for that aspect of the operation. Um, it's a little more expensive mineral, but when it gets right down to it, uh, you know, that extra option and the extra stuff that it adds to help you get one more calf is, is a big deal for those guys. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. And, and you know, the other thing that I really lean towards on those type of operations, and some of them will use loose mineral, but I push a little bit more towards the tubs on those types of guys. Because at the end of the day, there's, a lot, there's research that's been done out there, and it shows that nine out of 10 days will get a cow to go hit a tub mineral versus six out of 10 days hitting like a loose mineral feeder. And so when you're talking about how important being sure that we have the right mineral intakes on cows that are, you know, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in some cases, um, I just feel like that little bit of extra expense from a one, the better mineral, and two, a tub as well, ends up being well worth it in the end. Right, one more calf a year can pay for that type of situation in a real big hurry in an operation that's that's in that aspect of the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know, uh, we also offer some different minerals, some different things out there um, with some medication options in it. Uh, one in particular, uh, I know that we do sell a lot kind of down in your area, are the Aramias and the AU5600 options. Uh, and that Aramiasin option uh, helping with and plasmosis and, and control that. Um, but you know, that's not to be taken lightly because you will need a veterinary prescription for us to be able to sell that to you. Right, in my part of the country, in southeastern Ohio, um, especially around that strip mine type ground, uh, there is some guys that get into that anaplasmosis and, and do lose some cows every year because of anaplasmosis. Um, you know, that's something we can feed right in that mineral. They get a steady consumption of that four ounces per day. Uh, you know, that aramycin's mixed right in that'll help that cow, you know, get over that hurdle and maybe maybe not catch that anaplasmosis problem. So, you know, that's something deal with your local vet on for sure. Um, you know, if you, you can get a VFD for sure and we can we can get that that product solution for you and, and get it out to your farm in a timely manner. Yeah, we'll put that blip in there. Please work with your local veterinarian. Uh, we are not uh, veterinarians. We can't write you the script. Uh, so have a relationship with that person and um, see if that's something, but it is an option um, if your veterinarian thinks it's the, the right option for you. So work with your vet uh, on that one. So There is something else that we, we offer too that's, that's something definitely be noted is the fly control in these minerals. Um, you know, we actually have another segment we'll talk about too at a later date on fly control, uh, but that is something that you can add in this mineral to help, you know, prevent some of these, these horn flies and, and give you a little better performance on your cattle in a, in a hole. 
That's that's right. And and you know we'll it's the alticid is what which one we have in our loose minerals that are available free choice. Um, and there are some other fly control options. I know there's some different tubs and different things out there with the Clarifly product in there. And we will in a different segment talk about kind of the differences of those uh, and and which one does what, because they are a little bit different, right. but in particular, the one that's available in most of the loose minerals that we're talking about and the tub minerals we're talking about is gonna yeah, be the Alcid, so, which is a, for horn fly control. So, what else, what, what else is a need to know for them on mineral, Tommy? What, what, what's another tip or trick that you use in your operation or, or uh, you know, what, what's the one thing that you like about it? You know, some of the tips and tricks that, that I think of when I, I think of minerals is in, where you place your mineral feeder has got a big deal on consumption. Uh, you know, if, if the cattle are over consuming, your mineral feeder may be too close to the water tub, something like that. You can actually move that feeder farther away. Uh, that can help you control your consumption as well. So, you know, if you do have some overconsumption problems like we talked about earlier, it may not be a problem with your, with your nutrition. It may be a problem, you know, as where you put your mineral feeder. So that's something you can look at pretty easily, you know, to change change your consumption rate. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think for me, uh, one thing that you can utilize, uh, now my background and what I do is primarily with uh, feeding feedlot cattle. So I, I don't use a whole lot of loose mineral. I'm, uh, we're on full feed and so they're getting everything they need there. But where I end up using a lot of different things is I use the stress tubs and I use them in a starter pen situation. And really uh, utilizing that stress tub in stressful situations it doesn't have to be for for somebody taking cattle in like i am from a feedlot situation it can also be somebody that's weaning calves right um or, or something like that that stress tub anytime you're getting a, a stressful situation we have small ones little 60 pounders guys take to shows right um yeah. so anytime you're going to put cattle uh calves in particular um through some stressful periods um that tub's just a little bit further fortified it's got all the goodies the bells and whistles some some Diamond V yeast and things like that in there that's gonna help the rumen keep moving um, so that if we reduce some intakes, if some things change uh, with those cattle, in particular weaning, or in my case, bringing in you know, some sale barn farms, calves yeah. or something, or from different farms, um, it's something that's there, even if they don't go to the feed bunk, if they go lick that mineral tub, at least we're getting the mineral. At least I'm getting mineral in them. My vaccines are more effective. Um, and if I do need to treat it and pull, pull and treat an animal, that antibiotic's more effective as well. Right. So. so, Tommy, I think that's a pretty good introduction to minerals and kind of what we wanted to accomplish in the video today. I mean, we talked about the types, weatherized, non-weatherized, completes, non-completes, tubs. Uh, we talked about the high mag, the Availafors, a, a lot of the different options with Altacid and Aramycin. Um, but, you know, the other thing that we need to make sure that our customers know today is that Purina actually has a pretty good spring mineral promotion again this this year, and they can take advantage of that, can't they? Yeah, I mean, this is a typical promotion that you would get at a mineral meeting like we talked about earlier that we can't do this year because of COVID. So um, through Heritage, we're still offering that, that early booking program. Um, you know, that's a program that's going to run from now until March 22nd, which is the Monday after the Beef Expo. Um, me and Charlie will be at the Beef Expo, so if you guys are in the area, um, into that seed stock end of the, the world, come and visit us for sure. Um, you know, you can catch those promotion prices at your local Heritage Country store, um, or get in touch with your local nutrition specialist like I am in southeastern Ohio. Um, you know, we can, we can get you the information on that promotion. Um, we can get it booked up for you and, and get you on the right track on feeding some good mineral to your cattle. Yeah, we'll make sure that we post up uh, the contact information of our nutritional, our beef nutritional specialist, Dave Hamrick, Alan Robinson, and Tommy here, of course. Uh, and you can find most of us on the Heritage website as well under the feed tab. So if you need to try to get a hold of somebody, um, call any Heritage number you can find. They'll get you in contact with us, no problem. So evidently we are out of time. There was the bell. So, so class you, is out of session for the day. <laughs> class is out of session on minerals for the day. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to any of the nutritional specialists. We'd be glad to help. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.